Hello BookTube! I've got a short Friday Mega Stuff video for you today and I wish, oh BookTube, <laughs> I wish I had happier tidings to relate. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, Mega Stuff videos are when I, I lump together all the little bits and pieces that are, aren't interesting on their own and aren't any more interesting when you lump them all together, <laughs> uh, rather than make separate videos on them since I share so much on this channel. Uh, and I have two. I have two mega stuff items to talk about today. And the first one involves Preptober, uh, which is the name that NaNoWriMo people gave to the month of October. NaNoWriMo is National Novel Writing Month, which happens every November, in which hundreds of thousands of people get together in order to pursue the madcap goal of writing a 50,000 word first draft of a novel in one month. And that happens in two ways. First, by generating 1,667 words a day, and second, by not editing yourself while you write. <laughs> uh, and NaNoWriMo has a few rules. It's all very good-natured. I think that you enhance the experience of NaNoWriMo if you actually follow those rules. And one of them is that you can't start writing until the stroke of midnight on the 1st of November. Uh, so NaNoWriMo people, of which I am definitely one, I wouldn't miss NaNoWriMo for all the mud in Egypt, and I've been doing it for years, uh, NaNoWriMo people take October to plan and scheme and plot and outline because that is permissible according to the rules and it's vital if you want to make it to the end, if you want to so-called win NaNoWriMo, it's vital that you plot ahead of time so that you're not making stuff up and fitting it all together on the fly as you go along. No offense intended to pantsers who do that every year anyway. Uh, and that planning is Preptober. <laughs> that is the month of Preptober which is almost over, just has a week left. And I was doing swimmingly for Preptober. I had a couple of ideas, I settled on one. You eventually have to do that, no matter how attractive your other ideas are. I settled on one called Kendra Victrix, in which a young woman is vacationing from her own parallel dimension in our dimension on Earth, specifically to get a, a little rise out of how primitive it is. Uh, when she is cut off, from her means of return and has only herself and her personal technology, the personal technology that is connected with her body uh, to help her get through being stranded in a strange world. And there I was busy plotting out what that technology is, what it can do, what her own world is like, what who she meets, where she ends up in this world. Of course, it would be America, uh, but where in America and who is the cast? Keep your cast small is my, my strong advice. Unless you're writing epic fantasy or epic science fiction space opera, then keep your cast small to start with. Uh, I was working out all of that, and I was trying to ignore, except when I talked about it to you, the fact that something about Kendra Victrix just wasn't feeling perfect. You want every writing project to feel perfect. That's kind of ridiculous coming from me. I am, of course, a freelance writer. Any of the rest of you who are freelance writers will know that no project ever feels perfect. <laughs> you don't even know what that is, what that what those words mean when they're strung together. But when it comes to writing your own fiction in private, ideally you want it to feel perfect. For me, in my course of NaNoWriMo, there have been many projects that felt perfect. In fact, it was them feeling that way it was often the deciding factor on whether or not I would pick that idea from amongst other competing ideas. Something about Kendra Vickstrix has been bugging me since I settled on it and long before. Something has, whether it's uh, several of you, I leave my email on every video, so I have all sorts of ongoing conversations. It's wonderful, absolutely wonderful, that we can all just talk to each other. I think that's fantastic. Without any agendas, without any aggression, without anything like that, I think it's just wonderful. Uh, and several of you have, have addressed that issue in your emails and said, well, maybe it's that on paper, the Kendra Victrix sounds like a Mary Sue story where the young woman is just effortlessly struggle-free better at everything than everyone around her. It seems some people, some of you emailed and said, it seems like you're baking that into her character since she's coming from a more advanced civilization. And other people, including, uh, this was the idea that came to me, was that maybe the thing that's bothering about it is that it's a MacGuffin story. It's a gimmick story. Her personal technology is the key to the whole thing. It, the whole story turns on that in a way that makes it feel a little bit John W. Campbell-esque and maybe not something that will sustain my interest over 50,000 words on the whole course of a month. And there were a couple of other things, but those were the two main things, the two main candidates for what my reservations were. But I was decided to, to forge ahead anyway. Those of you who have done NaNoWriMo before, or those of you who are writers, 
will know already that that is also a very valuable writer's tool. It's a very valuable writer's skill that if you want to take this seriously, you're going to have to learn it anyway. Why not learn it for NaNoWriMo? And that is to forge ahead even though a project doesn't feel perfect. It's kind of unrealistic to expect that every project will. So I was doing that. I was forging ahead with Kendra Victrix, fleshing it all out, coming up with names, coming up with specific scenarios, that sort of thing. Uh, when I had a collective Zoom call uh, with Mark Richardson and Jason Harrigan of I Was at Bookland and Sean D. Stanfast, and uh, none of us pulled a Jeffrey Tubin in, in case you're, you're letting your mind wander into the gutter and you're wondering that, because we're all adults who have frickin' self-control. And if you don't know what I mean, feel free to Google Jeffrey Tubin's name if there's any justice in the universe. The thing I'm talking about will be the only thing that comes up when you Google his name for the rest of time. <laughs> but one way or another, I was in a Zoom call with them, and they were all burbling on happily about their own NaNoWriMo projects, how they're all going so swimmingly, how their projects feel just perfect. And I made the mistake, the tactical error, uh, of mentioning that Kendra Victory still didn't feel right to me, and they all started laughing, of course. And I said, why are you laughing at me? And they said, well, because you're not feeling completely sure about your project, and we all are. I said, just that? And they said, well, also, we heard from Brian at Bookish that you smell. And I repressed my, my tears until the Zoom call was over, but then the gates of hellish chaos opened wide. <laughs> and that is the mega stuff theme for today. Hellish chaos has engulfed me. Not only on this first mega stuff item, but we'll stick with that for now. And that is that suddenly I don't like anything about Kendra Victrix at all. Suddenly the tiny little hitch of doubt that I had has been ripped wide open to a chasm by the other members of the OGBG. And now I'm not happy with anything about the story. Now all of it seems to me to be gimmicky and dumb and one-dimensional. It, it seems like the, the quintessential project that will fail in the legendary, horrible second week of NaNoWriMo. This is not what you want to be feeling one week away from November. Not at all. If I follow this feeling and abandon Kendra Victrix, then I have to come up with a new idea. Let's say I don't, I don't take up at the Elliott Annex, which was my other rival idea. Let's say I, I come up with something completely new rather than run the risk that I work on at the Elliott Annex for a week and then have this same feeling. What if I, if I come up with something new, then I have to think it up, title it, outline it and research it in a week and that might sound horrific except that i know that i have done that in a day there was a nanorimo just it was just recently it was so recently that i was talking about it on this channel where i had an idea completely in mind i it was it was completely finished all i had to do was start writing it and literally the night before nanorimo i abandoned it in favor of a story that that ended up being called the winter queen uh, or the Ivy Queen, that I liked a lot more. I, I wrote a novel about Queen Mary, and I liked the experience a lot more than I'm sure I would have liked the other idea. So I have done this later than this, but it's still very disturbing. It's still very disturbing. I would like, for once, for uh, NaNoWriMo has occasionally gone orderly for me. I would like that if, if that were the case now, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I can go back to Kendra Victrix. I know what normal com composing doubts feel like. And I've often urged you to live with them, but don't let them rule you. These don't feel normal anymore. This suddenly feels like a flawed project, like a nanorimal failure waiting to happen. So that's chaos number one for this mega stuff video, is that suddenly I don't have a nanorimo project, and I need to come up with one, because I'm not going to miss nanorimo. So I need to come up with one. What do I do? Historical fiction, I've gone to that well many times for nanorimo. I really like writing historical fiction, but maybe something else? I don't know. I have no idea. And then there's Mega Stuff Chaos number two. And that involves the gigantic Brattle Bookshop mail hall, book hall that I did yesterday. I've got a bunch of books that I found at the Brattle yesterday. And uh, part of the chaos involved in that book hall is predictable and no big deal. I knew it as soon as I, as I turned off the, the camera. I knew that part of those books would just nail me down to reading, that I would, I would wouldn't be able to resist their siren call. I wouldn't be able to do my planned reading for that night. I would just sink myself into those books. I was kind of thinking that it would be the books that I hadn't read. Instead, I sank myself into James Fenimore Cooper, The Deer Slayer, a book that I have read at least 100 times. I know it backwards and forwards. And, and yet, 
I got in a beautiful new, a beautiful Scribner Illustrated Edition, and I could not resist. I could not resist reading it for a chunk of last night. And that was despite the fact that every time I read Fenimore Cooper, I am reminded of how leaden and pompous an author he is. Every criticism that Mark Twain levels against him in that famous, famous takedown is true. It works anyway on me. His novels all do, especially the Natty Bumpo novels. They work on me anyway. Even despite the fact that right there on the page I can see that all of those flaws are real. That's not the chaos that I'm talking about. The chaos that I'm talking about was, was oh, the door to it was opened in my hall video where I mentioned the idea that has cropped up in my mind a few times this year of rearranging this room, radically rethinking the criterion of books in this room, specifically with a goal of opening up one or even two whole bookcases that, and then rethinking everything. Essentially, opening up enough space in this room so that I can actually think about bringing all of the books that I actually want to keep into this room. And that doorway was opened by the fact that I, I don't know if any of you remember this, but I, I have a bookcase that I recent, relatively recently put up in front of the closed door of a closet in this room. And I have kept that bookcase mostly empty. I've wanted to fill it with keepers from the brattle gradually as they accumulated. But having that space here has made me think, well, okay, you've got the beginnings. If you go through, your, I'm, I'm going through my penguin wall anyway with the Daily Penguin in order to winnow out the penguins that I don't want. If the penguins that I don't want are the equivalent of those two side bookcases, then suddenly I have a huge amount more room in addition to the bookcase in front of the closet. And what if I then don't stop? What if I go to the books on these shelves with a new attitude? Which of these things do I really want to keep? I haven't done that in this little book room in quite some time. What if I did that? How much space could I open up? What if, for instance, I opened up that whole back wall of space? Not got rid of all those penguins, but opened up so much space back there that I could put the penguins on some other bookcase and make that, for instance, a biography wall. Pulling in the biographies that I want to keep from the rest of Hyde Cottage and just putting them in this room. So that all the books that I, that I love and go to all the time are in this room and nowhere else. And that is the element of chaos number two, which is that suddenly I am actively thinking about drastically redoing the books in this room with a month, with two months left in the year. That is just the wrong time to be doing that for me. Might be great for the rest of you, but it's for me, that is just the wrong time to be thinking of such a project. And yet, I am. So your mega stuff video for today doesn't have any fluffy little stories about male boys or sparrows or anything like that. Instead, it has the yawning gap of chaos <laughs> that is throwing throwing my, my Jesuitical ordered life out the window. And if I'm not going to kvetch about that to you, well, then who am I going to kvetch about it to? So I, I'm kvetching about it. So I, those are your mega stuff updates for today, and they are gruesome. And I don't know, again, I mentioned in an earlier video today that I'm not 100% sure of filming videos on the weekends anymore. The, my weekends have been awful for the last, like, three weekends in a row. So if time and opportunity and especially mood open up this weekend, then I will give you an update on this chaos that has engulfed my life. And if not, well, we'll reconvene on Monday. If Monday even happens, there might be empty shelves behind me on Monday. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wrap this up, but I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you, BookTube.